Well, hello again, and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth But Heavenly Minded, and I'm your host, Irvish. Today, we're going to be looking at an article, Would You Refuse Help in Times of Need? And it, this article uh, by Steve Halsheiser starts off by talking about the Red Cross, and I just want to relate uh, one little story. We had lost everything in a fire uh, when my children were very young, and uh, the Red Cross helped us. Uh, we received some clothes for the kids and uh, a kitchen table, which was so needed, and uh, we had get, gotten some other furniture from other people and what we could pick up in a used store. But we started our recovery and we got back on our feet. So the Red Cross uh, means something to me when I read this article. So let's just read it. The Red Cross has been used for many years as a symbol of for emergency aid, military medics wore a Red Cross on their helmets, a hospital, first aid stations, dispensaries, and ambulances are so identified with the Red Cross. When disaster strikes, relief agents respond, and the Red Cross uh, symbol can be seen on rescue personnel and emergency vehicles. Their agencies are a great help to those suffering personal injury or loss or due to flood, fire, or other disasters. We would be hard to imagine someone who is in such great need refusing help. Could you even imagine yourself refusing emergency help uh, of, rel of a relief agency if you were injured or left homeless? by a natural desire or an accident. No doubt all of us would be delighted to receive help from the relief organization. It may be humbling to receive such help, but certainly in a time of great crisis, we would gladly be humbled in order to be helped. Remarkably, Different pride comes to refuse the help God freely provides to meet the greatest of all our needs. I lost my place there for a minute. <laughs> we, what is the greatest need that we all have? It is, it, is it, it is forgiveness of sins. The Bible said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. However, it also says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 6.23. Christ come, came to die on the cross for our sins so we could know God's forgiveness. If we will humble, uh, humbly confess our sins before God against whom we have sinned and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, God will forgive our sins. Just as those redeemed, uh, or I'm sorry, just as those rendered helpless by a hurricane or an earthquake, are not asked to buy or earn the relief agency's help. Neither is God asking us to buy or earn forgiveness. He tells us in his word, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Faith is believing God when he says, if we believe God when he speaks about our sinful and helpless condition and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, God will freely forgive our sins and give us eternal life. Only our indifference to pride 
will cause us to reject such a wonderful gift. Read your Bible and see how to receive God's wonderful gift of salvation. The following verses will help you get started. Read the Gospel of John and see how you can freely receive forgiveness of your sins and God's free gift of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, put your name there, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15 For the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved. It is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5.6 Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say to you, you, he that heareth my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John 5.24